Brandon Moreno, minus 125. Ryan Benoit, plus 105. Who do you like here? When the fire gets real hot, Ryan Benoit folds, man. It just seems like that. those are the fights he's in. I get that he's had fun fights against like Josh Sampao and those, but these guys beat him, traditionally speaking. He hasn't really, really, other than the Sergio Pettis fight, which he was losing... He's never wowing anybody. I've always wanted to get behind this kid, you know? Comes from that Sakeson gym in uh, Texas, good Muay Thai. Wrestled, I think, uh, won a couple state titles in Texas as a wrestler. Fought for the MFC title. But even in that MFC title fight, he's doing good. And then Anthony Burchak just puts the heat on him and breaks him. He comes to the UFC and Sampo does the same thing and beats him. A- and we just notice that every time. That Ben Nguyen fight is the same way. Bum, 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 three-piece hits him and he hits the deck. Now, Ben Nguyen's sharp, mm-hmm. but... He just hits the deck right away, and then he just gets on him and owns him. This, this guy's got flaws. The hotter you're able to bring the fight to him, the more he's going to make a mistake. When he makes a mistake, guys always seem to capitalize on it. Brandon Moreno is a chaotic fighter, Paul. Absolutely. Whether he's just whipping bombs at your head standing or trying to grab a hold of your neck for that guillotine, mm-hmm. he's very well-rounded. When I look at the line, it's a very fair line. Yep. I think Brandon Moreno has a lot of merit to him. Guy just coming off a win over a top-10 flyweight. Uh, don't overlook this kid. But no, he's talented. Don't get me wrong. But I like the line a lot. I like Brendan Moreno. I'm with you. I'm with you as well. And I'm not just getting lost in the in the fact that he beat Louis Smolka. Yeah, it's very Pantola. easily to be like, oh, look what he did. But yeah, exactly. I'm thinking about that Pantoja fight um, on the Ultimate Fighter, where Pantoja, frankly, is a better opponent than Ryan Benoit. I would have to agree with you. Yeah. I would and, say if um, Ryan Benoit was like fighting Pantoja, Pantoja for his RFA title, I would favor that Pantoja. That guy d- deserves to be in the UFC. He could fight. You know, he could be arguably even close to the top 15 in that division. We, you know, I think he will probably get a shot. Yeah, there's a lot of good guys in that. A bunch of those guys from that show are going to get their opportunity to uh, to step up. And uh, and Moreno, yeah, he was standing in there taking the fire, and then he got submitted against a guy who just had a higher level of BJJ than him. But, uh, but yeah, I, I agree with you in the sense that, yeah, Moreno in that first round, especially against Pantoja, just chaos. Oh, baby. He throws and he's everything. he's got a beard. Flying knees, overhands, kids, hooks. Kids got goes a, with the body, Kids kicks. got a chin as well. Tra- seemingly training with Benavidez recently and that guy Eric Shelton and, and a bunch of these other guys. Um, I think they're Can putting in a small guy quick? camp yeah. all together. I think that's a, a good little sign. I, I think as well, you see him on the show, and you and I, we speak about this all the time. What you get in the show is not necessarily how good you are because you're stuck in a house where your regular training partners aren't there. And this guy's actually fighting on the other team against Henry Cejudo, right? He trains with Henry Cejudo outside of, of the UFC. Now he's on the show and he's with Team Joseph Benavidez because, you know, luck of the draw. Uh, it's a crazy situation. So he might not go in, he might not beat Pantoja, but then we see him in the UFC with a actual, not full fight camp, but we see what we can actually do when he's comfort, comfortable. And it's spectacular. Now you're getting the same thing. And I love that he went to elevation because it doesn't just prove that I'm willing to go train with the best guys. He's surrounding himself with some of the best guys. But also it shows that when he was working his way through the regional scene, he did so with Henry Cejudo. He goes on the show. He sees Joseph Benavidez training. He sees what this what, what these other guys are doing yeah, to and get I, better. I, I'm not throwing Yoni Sherbatov under the bus. I love that guy. But we spoke to him when he came into the office, and he talked about the difference in the training. He was just like, you know what? I thought wrestler, boxer, I'd fit better with Henry Cejudo. But Joseph Benavidez is a super crafty guy, and he's experienced so much. that Why wouldn't you want to learn under that guy? Conversely, now you're training with the guy who's on the card. Eric Shelton, I— Here's my conspiracy. This guy's going to be on the card. He'll be the he'll be the thirteenth fight added on. He'll take on whoever loses between Agi Kubo and Tim Elliott. Shelton Kid is a stud. Mm-hmm. They should sh- they should sign Sherbatov too because he had to fight Shelton, and and ain't nobody beating Shelton other than unfortunately the one guy that might challenge for the belt coming up. And, and this kid's going to be good. But what I'm getting back at is when I look at this kid, I think man, Brendan Moreno is super young. He's decided he's smart enough to see this is the highest level training I can get right now. He's surrounding himself with the best bodies he can right now. And he's fighting Ryan Benoit, a guy who's been very unwilling to travel in his own career and has been very susceptible to fast fights. And this is a very fast fight, a flyweight.